Dude is a, a, a player that plays in a lot of open tournaments, and if he does that, he probably realizes that Patient Warrior is one of the strongest decks <laughs> in the game. TJ was trying to find it like like a very like kind of clean, clever way to put it. It's, it's a pretty good deck. No, it is the it is the deck that is shaping the metagame right now. Yeah. When you see builds of decks come into play, it oftentimes has been influenced by Grim Patron. Uh, and, and just because the strategy is so powerful, there are yeah. very few ways to effectively counter it with just a couple tech cards. You really have to dedicate strategies to fighting against it. And that's when you know you have a powerhouse deck on your hands, is when it's kind of having that effect on the metagame. Um, so I think it's super likely to be in their lineup at this moment. Um, you know, Jordy's likely to be very burst in it. But either way, we're going to be seeing the Druid battle here. We have Wild Growth versus Darnassus Aspirin. Which one of these actually wins the fight? Oh, you were you asking me? Well, it's just kind of, you know, both, I guess. It's kind of a rhetorical question, but... <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, they both ramp up. The the thing is, is uh, Darnassus Aspirin is temporary. Uh, let's say, uh, like UCLA has, they have the Wrath. Then they just Wild Growth next turn. So uh, the ramp is, is going to be more of a benefit to UCLA as long as they have a way to deal with the opponent's Darnassus Aspirin. Yeah, and I think that's what... Um, I think that's what Simon Trazer is considering right now is... What happens if we coin out this uh, Darnassus Aspirate? It gives our opponent the, the ability to just uh, Wild Growth, or I'm sorry, to Wrath on turn two. So now in this spot instead, Wild Growth comes out. Now Simon Fraser can play the Darnassus Aspirant. And then UCLA has to make the choice. Are we going to develop a minion this turn, or are we going to take out this Darnassus Aspirant and make sure that we delay our opponent's tempo? It's a tough choice. It's yeah, a really it, tough choice. It is a tough choice. I think in these spots, I tend to go for board development because it's kind of a, a two-fold effect. Now your opponent's in the same situation, you know, they have to start taking care of Pilot Shredder. Um, so this is a trap that if you're kind of looking at the situation you don't know what to do, this is a great lesson to take away from it. Typically, minions getting on board means that they can start dealing damage, and if they deal repetitive damage, you've gotten so much mileage out of them that it makes up for the fact that you maybe lost something on your opponent's side of the board. Yeah. So uh, I, I like that they're going for the Pilot Shredder here, not falling into just wrath and hope that it offsets their opponent. And then sometimes you get rewarded this way. I mean, you know, they did lose their pilot shredder here, but now they're going to be able to take out this aspirant um, in, in a number of different ways. Ah, but they're giving him initiative is a big thing here. Uh, not developing anything. I was thinking uh, Simon Fraser might have thought about coin intervening to Ancient Lore there to get something big on the board and uh, sort of refill their hand. Their, their nasty aspirant would have been challenged by the uh, piloted shredder, but... It would have given them, you know, a big 5-5 five five on the board and some, some cards. Well, I think their goal here is just to occupy their opponent's turns as well. You know, UCLA is still in a very similar position. Do we kill the Darnass Darnassus Aspirant or would we play a 5-drop in this situation? It happens to be they pick up Shade Next Ramus, which is one of their better draws for this turn. Um, but uh, I still like the way that, that uh, Simon Fraser played their percentages here. They're yeah. trying to disrupt a 5-drop and then get something up there on the board prior to that happening. Yeah. And now we're going to see the coin innervate Ancient of Lore, especially with the second Ancient of Lore drawn into the hand. So now we're going to get to that point where uh, one player has a ramp advantage, or one team has a ramp advantage, one team has a card advantage. Yeah, and so UCLA, I'm not sure which, how, you know, how they like their position just at the moment. They're lacking a six drop right now, but innervate is going to change that. Yes, it is. Even if it's only netting you one mana, the thing about it here is it's getting out of 510. A turn before you could play a 5-10, and that's really the important part of this card. Don't worry, they're floating an extra mana here. Yeah, the floating of extra mana, especially in the mirror matchup, is a big deal because in the mirror matchup, you fall behind on board, you're in a lot of trouble in the game because you just don't come back on the board as as well as some other classes do. They just can't fight uh, from behind, especially in the mirror match. The rope is ready to go on the left side. Yes, it is. It's like, Let's go, boys. Let's wrap this up. <laughs> I got rope things to do. <laughs> I got rope things to do. What do what what do ropes do in their spare time? Like Hang out. They wrangle up some rams. Yes, they do. <laughs> Hang out. I like that one. That's good. That one has a darker meaning. <laughs> well, you took it there all of a sudden. Jeez, I was thinking like, you know, like video games and chill. But <laughs> you know what else has a dark meaning? An Ancient of Lore on the board and no way to deal with it. Yeah, that usually spells trouble for uh, for one side. Looks like Simon Fraser's got their eye on that Ancient Walk. I'm sorry, the Ancient of Lore. So many Ancients in this game. Pilot the Shredder, I think, also is totally fine. This does uh, give them access to Force Nature Savage War a little bit earlier. Ah, but it's so... 
your opponent played a 5-10 and you played a 4-3. Yes. Like, but that's oh, that's what it comes down to a lot of times in this matchup is, you know, just the sheer power of each individual card on the board. No so. question about it. And even taking their favorable trades, trying to play around Keeper of the Grove top decks. Yeah. Um, but I think Simon Fraser realizes in this spot that they're going to have to use Force Nature Savage or likely to, to even up the advantage again, to try to get back to a neutral state. Um, so I actually like holding on to the Intervent because of that. Yeah, we'll see if uh, Simon Fraser can uh, have enough to come back in this one. They're still even a turn away from being able to use Force of Nature Innervate Savage Roar to try and get themselves back on the board. Yeah, do have Swipe and Wrath, though. So, you know, ways to tech 10 points of the power on the board as well as leave themselves a minion behind. Yeah, you're still uh, giving the initiative once again over to UCLA, just hoping that they don't have anything. Again, card advantage, but not board advantage. And their card advantage is you know, slowly starting to fade away. Savage Combatant's an interesting card. Not really going to help them right now, but could be of use in the future. Yeah, just just trades for the moment. The one-eyed cheat! Yeah, well, he's going to get cheated out of this one, because all it takes is a single point of damage to deal with him. Yeah. You would think a guy that deals four power probably would, would survive a little bit easier than that. Cheaters never win. <laughs> and winners never cheat. It's a lesson. That's true. Less at first. Have you all. ever played a pirate after that guy, by the way? Yeah. Like, it is, it is the best feeling in the world. Yeah. You're just like, nope, you can't kill my 4-1 this turn. I have. I actually made a pirate rogue deck that had one one-eyed cheat in it. Single one-eyed cheat. A single one-eyed cheat. That's a better way to say it. <laughs> it's really a better way to say it. It had one single-eyed cheat in it. Yeah. <laughs> one single-eyed cheat. It had one... I'd cheat in it. <laughs> he's just eyed. <laughs> he's got like nine eyes. <laughs> ah, he sees everything. <laughs> he's he's eyed. <laughs> so this is likely one of those turns I was talking about. You know, honestly, I, I look at this position and I go, how much more damage can you afford to take? You know, at this point, your opponent has been willing to unveil the shade. Um, they put a four six on the board, so you're staring down nine damage. This was kind of what you were trying to get to by holding on to the innervate anyway. And you have a reload behind it in, in some capacity. So I look at this turn and I think, is there a way to not force nature savage we're here to try to recover this board state? And considering that your opponent played a five drop and hero powered, you know, it honestly I don't think it's unlikely they're gonna stumble in a spot like that. You know, yeah. their hand I think is likely to, to be something just like it is. Yeah, and I mean, this is the only way that they're going to clear. They can hope that University of California Los Angeles does not have something big to play on the board the next turn. Because Simon Fraser knows that their hand has uh, pretty decent quality. And they, they realize that, you know, pushing extra two damage to face is not worth taking that extra damage. So uh, go ahead and just use those treants to clear up the board instead of using their face. Pilot of Treader is sort of a, uh, a blessing draw here. You know, prior to this, you were looking at Harrison Jones' Darnassus Aspirant, Hero Power. Now, instead, it's 9 power and a minion that doesn't die very easily. Yeah. So, this situation went from okay for Simon Fraser to pretty darn miserable. Mm -hmm. They don't really have a way to take care of what's going on. And they've drawn their Wild Growths on turn 7 and turn 8. These are the nightmare situations to draw them. I actually remember very early on um, in competitive Hearthstone. We had tried Wild Growth and Druid, and we had played so many games in a row where we had drawn them like on turn six, seven, and eight, that we were like, we don't know if this card's that good. We're just going to play one of it. <laughs> great idea. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a great idea in hindsight. Oh, but Savage Roar <laughs> drawn. What is going on? And that's that, just it. That is it. And I wasn't even counting, but that is going to be. Wait a sec. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I thought I saw 15 for a second there. I'm like, they're one off. But they <laughs> no. Boys over at UCLA are going to tie up the series one to one with that Savage Roar Gerard.